Hi guys, my name's Andy, and on today's video we're going to talk about how to install a pointing MIMO antenna on your RV. Alright, so let's get this started. So like I said, I am installing a pointing MIMO antenna. We're putting it actually on my personal RV. It is a Keystone Fusion. Um, and I've been uh, waiting for the weather to clear up to kind of get this video out and uh, put this together for you. So I'm super excited about finally getting mine installed. Uh, now I am installing the pointing 7-in-1. So it has four cellular, two Wi-Fi, and one GPS antenna all inside this box. Now it doesn't matter the orientation of this. I don't have to point it anywhere. Um, since it is a fin, I'm going to align it more or less perfectly with my RV and the direction, but the, the overall orientation of this does not matter for the most part. Uh, now, to get started, the first things we're going to do is cover a couple basics. This is probably more of a part two to my PepWave installation video. So I've already done that. I'm going to point that here, and I'll put it down below. Um, and that was actually, again, in my RV, us installing our Transit Duo PepWave um, in the RV. All about this, and I mentioned this up front, is this is about location. Where you're going to put this antenna matters. Where you put the pep wave can matter. There's a couple of things you have to take into account. The first thing is where can you get power, right? So the pep wave needs DC power, preferably, uh, but it also runs off of AC power if you want to plug it in. Um, the second thing is where can you run this antenna, right? So this antenna has about a seven foot cord that comes with it, six foot cord. Um, you need to be able to run that from the roof down to wherever the pep wave is. Um, and then third, when this is up on the roof, is it going to run into anything? Is it going to be in, in the way of anything else? All of that kind of matters. We also want to make sure this is 18 to 24 inches away from any other antenna or AC unit. So if you're going to have it in the middle of your RV where there's an AC unit nearby, just make sure you've got 18 to 24 inches. If you don't, there can be interference problems, um, especially if it's next to an AC unit, you'll have interference on the pointing. Uh, but if you have it next to another antenna, they can just mess with each other, and then you'll get any benefit from it. One key important note I'm going to also insert at this point is the optional grounding plate option. Uh, this is not required and you won't even see it in my video. I did not do this on my particular installation, um, but we have been, to, uh, but it is and can be recommended depending on your install. Uh, so an option is to take a grounding plate, it could be a 12 by 12 aluminum plate, galvanized steel plate, and use that on your RV. You can adhere that directly to the RV roof if you want, use a magnet mount if it's the steel option, um, or just adhere this then directly to like the aluminum plate, and that will ground the antenna. And that actually does make a big difference. That will add one to three decibels, which is a pretty big amount um, to your antenna service. Uh, you can do that. It's an option. It is recommended, um, but it's not required. So when you're mounting your PEP wave, if you're going to do one of these roof mount antennas, um, you know, look ahead and do that. Now, if you have a mobile mark antenna, we're going to do a video kind of reviewing the differences between the pointing and the mobile mark. In this particular case, if you're doing a standard roof mount antenna install, um, it'll be pretty much the same. They both have adhesives on the bottom. They both have the antenna cables coming out the bottom. They'll be very, very similar. Um, so feel free to follow along if you're going to do that. Couple things with the pointing though that makes it a little unique if necessary. This has a couple different mounting options. I'm gonna go with probably the most standard in my RV, which is drill a hole and put the antenna right on top of that hole. Um, that I felt was the easiest for me. One, because I didn't have anything nearby um, to potentially snake this through and use um, so I didn't have to drill a new hole. I had to put a hole in regardless. And then second, um, I thought that was gonna be the most watertight solution. We'll get more into that um, when we actually get to that part of the process, but that was why I went with this. Again, the mobile mark is going to be a very similar installation too. A couple of different options you have for mounting this. So like I said, we're gonna do this kind of standard one. You have a couple different connectors for lengths inside the roof if you need to protect your cables. Um, you can play with those to figure out which one works for you the most. This one I actually have set up to do kind of a flat mount. You can see the antenna comes out the back 
and is totally flush. If I can get the light right, there you go. Um, and it has the magnetic mounts on this one. So this is if you're going to mount it to the top of like an Airstream or the top of a truck or uh, a car and you need it to work, um, you can stick it right on the bottom. This comes out completely flush. Um, and actually, I'm gonna show you a picture here of another installation um, from a customer and they have this flush out the back and they're using their antenna to go through their solar uh, their solar channel for their cables. So that way they didn't have to put another hole in their roof. They could use an existing kind of cable run for their antenna. Now while you're planning all of this and while you're going through this, some of you might find this cable is a bit short for what you're trying to do. Um, this cable is actually the, the kind of the optimal length we want to keep them at. The longer the cable goes, the less actual decibel strength increase you get from these particular antennas. Um, so we've kind of kept it at that six foot. You can get an extension if you really need one, um, but every time you extend one of these cables out, you do lose decibels in that extension. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you need the extension, really make sure you need it and you can't put it somewhere else. Now let's get started with the installation. Uh, the first thing we did is I actually found the right location. So I've already put my PEP wave. I've already installed that. I've looked on the roof right above. There's nothing uh, going to be in the way that's causing an issue there. Um, so I actually take uh, my drill and I drill up from the ceiling and then I take a screwdriver and I just kind of put a hole or a little dent in my roof and from there I knew where to drill the hole in from the roof. Um, in my case I just have this kind of small, I think it's an inch and a quarter drill bit. There's a couple different options you can get, find the tool you're comfortable with um, and you can drill a hole right through. In my case my holes were a little bit off so I fed an ethernet cable through and then with the end of the ethernet cable, I taped these tips um, to that and then pulled them through. Quick note, it's very important. When you're taping these up, make sure you don't rip off these little tags, these labels. I can, we have no way of knowing what cable is what if these labels come off. So if you need to use a scotch tape around them and then the duct tape to pull through, just make sure you don't rip them off because you won't be able to find out which one is what later. Uh, so that's kind of the other important note there. Um, from that, I just kind of quickly and gently pulled that through. Um, so I have now all of my cable basically inside my RV, and uh, and we're, we're pulling it all the way through the cabinet and then through to where the PEP wave is being housed. Once I have the cables through, I'm actually going to go back up on the roof and securely mount the pointing antenna. Uh, the cables inside, they are where I need them to be. I don't need to do any further work on that. Um, I want to make sure that I get everything done on the roof. On the roof, now that I'm ready to actually secure the, the pointing antenna to it, is I clean the surface. Find a good material. Mineral spirits is typically recommended in this case, um, but it de does depend on the roof material. So find out what might be a good option for you and just do a thorough clean. You really want the adhesive to be sticky and you don't want any water to get through. Uh, so I clean off the surface. I make sure my antenna is all lined up nice and straight. Um, again, it really doesn't matter which way that it's going, but it is a fin mount, so I don't want wind to get against it or anything, so I lined it up nice and straight on, um, on, the, on my roof, and then I taped it down. Now, I did not use the magnet mounts, so you did see me take um, the sticky pads and push those into where the magnet mounts could be, if that was an option you were going with, and then peel the stickers off of each of those, and then push it in place. Uh, now, I held it down for about 20 seconds, I think, um, and then released it. Uh, and from that part, you're pretty much good to go. There's not really much else you need to do on the roof. After I did the rest of the inside work, you can come back and do this, is I put a bead of Dicor around um, the antenna. I thought that was important to just overdo the water sealant part of this. Uh, the manufacturer does not say that is required or even necessary, um, but I thought that was just really important to make sure that this was going to be as watertight as possible, and Dicor, in most cases, is your best bet. Now, quick note, if you're actually going to do this flush kind of back mount option. I'm gonna throw a couple pictures up here. This is from another installation we did. This is a class A with solar, and they already had a junction box with a hole going inside their RV. They didn't wanna drill a whole nother hole in their roof just for the pointing antenna. So they did a flush back mount 
um, exit off the pointing antenna and then ran their cables um, through that junction box there. Another great solution if you don't want to put another hole in your roof. Now everything's done on the roof. We're all set, we're all sealed up, and we're all ready to go up there. Final step is to come inside and connect all the cables to the pep wave. Quick note, quick note, don't fast forward this, wait. There are going to be these adapters inside with the thing with a little baggie that comes with the box. This comes with it. Everything inside comes with it. This is not an option. It comes with it. Inside that bag is going to be this little adapter. This adapter is needed and required for the Wi-Fi portion. So these cables here, find the ones that are for Wi-Fi. In this particular case, they say 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. MIMO, that's, that's the, that's the Wi-Fi one. Um, you'll notice these cables, the ones that come on the pointing, and the ones in the PEP wave are all male. So you can't, it won't work. You're going to have to, this is, this adapter is female on both sides. So when you screw this in on this side, it will allow it to connect correctly to the PEP wave side. Without this, you're going to be like, why is the Wi-Fi not working? I can't get any service. It's because you don't have any Wi-Fi antennas plugged in unless you're using the adapters. So I just want to say, important note, don't forget these little adapters. Okay, so really at this point, connect all the cables. I have seven um, cables I'm connecting. I'm connecting four cellular, two Wi-Fi, and one GPS. If you are going to, if you got the full-time package, that's going to be a five-in-one. That's going to be two cellular, two Wi-Fi, one GPS. Um, you can connect those up. Again, they're all labeled because we didn't rip the labels off with the tape or anything. Um, so they're pretty quick and easy to, to install. If you're doing the full-time package, you'll find that you have to kind of split these up and they go on either side. You can watch our video where we show you how to connect those. Um, if you do it slowly, you do it carefully, um, they do fit. It's a tight fit, but they will fit. On the 7 and one everything's on the same side, so it's a lot easier. Uh, okay, that's it. Once you're all connected, you can log into your admin console of the PEP wave. You should instantly be able to see the increase in service and, and speeds. Um, for my particular location, I went from like three bars AT&T service to full bars LTEA, which means I had multiple towers I was now able to use for service. Uh, so we've had a great experience so far with installing this. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the video below. You can also email us at support at mobilemusthave.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. We have a lot of other videos about pep waves and antennas and even more content coming out constantly. So please subscribe, check out our channel for more content. All right, guys, again, my name is Andy from Mobile Must Have and I'll see you soon.